Greetings, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty well. It is a very, very muggy, humid day here in Appalachia. Um, it's been raining for like the last two or three days. Finally stopped raining, and it's kind of just miserable and sticky. Wife's at work, kids at school. I am still waiting to hear which country I have to go to next. I think it's a toss-up right now between Indonesia and Japan. Um, I'm leaning, I'm hoping that I go to Japan more than Indonesia. Although the last time I was in Indonesia, it wasn't bad at all. But um, you never know. And hopefully it won't be like moronically short notice kind of thing. So it's kind of up in the air. It is funny. I had a little bit of a dust up with my son last night because he was got done eating a banana and he goes to toss the banana peel onto the mountain that is our trash can in the kitchen. This is a pet peeve of mine. And I was like, hey, boy, first of all, that goes into the compost pile that doesn't go in the trash, the banana peel. Secondly, take out the damn trash. He's like, uh, there's still room. And my son will do this. I don't know. I don't understand. My son will shove as much trash into this trash can until it's the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And that's this thing. It's, there's always more room. I was like, take out the trash. It's raining. Take out the trash. <laughs> it's amazing to me. My son will do like 18 miles in one of his soccer games. But if you ask him to, if you tell him to take out the trash, it's like you're ordering him onto the Bhutan death march. <laughs> I feel like asking my wife, what happens when I'm not here? Do you guys just live in filth until I show back up again? Hey, he's getting, like, my boy's getting to that age where the hormones are starting to flow into him. So he's starting to kind of try to push and flex a little bit more. He's, he's trying to find his way in the world, if you will. His body's going through changes and stuff. But but it, it, it it's just it's 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 humorous I think he did take out the trash of course so while they were gone I went out and go jogging in this miserable weather and stuff came back was taking a dump after my run and I of course do the usual thing when I'm sitting on the toilet and that is uh, dick around on uh, Twitter that is my one vice I've given up alcohol I've given up uh, Gambling and loose women and all that jazz, but my one vice is to still screw around on the old Twitter. And one of the things I commented on this morning was, for some reason, in my feed, I got this thing from Paige Van Pelt talking about Jim Stewartson and hacking but legal. When Jim Stewartson and Jackie Singh team up, team up we stop, look, listen, and act. And it's like, lady... You should not be listening, or maybe it's a guy, whoever you are. You should not be listening to these two. If you notice that I have Jim Stewartson's um, account blocked, Jim Stewartson is quite literally the only porn bot or the only non porn pout bot that I have blocked. I generally mute people, but with Jim Stewartson, I, I just blocked him completely because I find Jim Stewartson really, really depressing. Um, I, I think I got a video. I know I have a video on my on my uh, YouTube account somewhere where I open up about this young young to me Air Force veteran who was married with a couple of kids and his whole life went to shit mainly because he could not give up the fact that he was no longer in the Air Force and he was no longer I want to say he was like a medic or something. And he got separated by the Air Force because his MOS, his job classification, if you will, they simply had too many people of his rank, and he hadn't made rank fast enough. He was an E5, so five ranks out of uh, five pay grades out of nine. He was over halfway up, but he hadn't made enough time. And he got separated. He wasn't really ready at all for that transition because I think he was planning on making a career out of the Air Force. And he was not willing to make the efforts he needed to make to successfully transition into the civilian world. And unfortunately, this guy, this guy's life went to hell. 
where he ended up getting a divorce, um, mainly because he was, he was drinking so much. He became extremely paranoid. Um, his wife ended up having to leave him. Um, primarily, she was, a, she was leaving an abusive home. Um, talking to her, she didn't want to have to do this. She was trying to do everything she could to save the marriage because she, at the end of the day, she still loved her husband. And he got really into um, gang stalking and paranoia. He believed that um, eBay, you know, was out to get him, and he was constantly trying to find people that would lawyers that would help him sue eBay because he's honestly running scams on eBay, and they kept suspending his account and. Eventually, he ended up taking his own life, and it was very, very sad. And with Jim Stewartson, I get the same vibe with him. I'm, you know, where I have no direct proof of what he's on. I, I don't. This is all based on my experience as an alcoholic and as somebody that works with a not insignificant number of men and women who are struggling with drugs and alcohol coming out of the military. And the vibe I get from Jim Stewartson is he is a very hardcore alcoholic, and I suspect that he's also using barbiturates. And I don't get these people that feed Jim Stewartson's crazy conspiracy theories and stuff, and they make it sound like he knows what he's talking about and that he's somebody that you should listen to when you could just watch his podcast and it's very clear to see that he can't sit through his own podcast without nodding off. I mean, he almost comes off like a heroin addict. And I, I find it just incredibly, um, just, just really, really depressing. And so, what is this? Remy will not shut up about me and my friends. So here's 18 unbearable seconds of his attempted music, along with some of his recent spurging. Fake journalists, huh? Well... <laughs> Again, Jim acts like he is a journalist, and he's absolutely not. This is a guy that's getting sued by Michael Flynn, who himself is also a clown. But it's just like, I don't understand these people that give him money and stuff. Because he's not mentally in a good place. He's not physically in a good place. Um, I would imagine, I have to imagine that Jim Stewartson is estranged from his kids. I have to. I, I have a hard time believing that Jim Stewartson can, like, dial back the drinking and the drug abuse and the insane paranoia long enough that he could fake it around people that care and love him. I suspect that, the, that his family is all kind of keeping him at a distance because that's what ends up happening with us drug and alcohol abusers. We, our addiction tends to isolate us from our support networks, which we end up preferring because those people in our support network are usually trying to get us healthy and clean. So it's like, it's depressing to me. I, I fully admit there, there, there are certain things that I do to kind of isolate when I mentally get into a bad place. It's the whole reason I think my previous video I mentioned, I have to regularly take breaks from Patrick Tomlinson because I find him so damn depressing because I see people like Patrick and people like Jim where I'm like, you know what, if I didn't listen to my wife and my employer, my boss, when I had my moment of waking up in a hospital from a seizure due to my alcoholism, I could have ended up like these idiots. And I'm glad I didn't. But it's still one of those things that's like you, you don't like to be reminded about. It. It's sort of like when you, you, know, you get into a really bad car wreck and it's touch and go on whether or not you survive. You don't want to then start watching videos 10 years later watching car wrecks, you know what I mean? You have to, you want to be a little hands off on that stuff. But uh, the person that drives me nuts about all of this, and it's, it's no different between Jim and it's no different with Patrick, is Jackie Sin. I don't believe for a flipping second that Jackie believes any of the crap that she says. I don't. I think Jackie Singh is an incredibly manipulative, I'll, I'll come out and say it, downright evil individual. She knows that Jim is mentally unwell. She knows it, that he's a raging alcoholic. But she's going to feed his delusions because somehow in her head that's going to turn into like fame and fortune. I'm not exactly sure. 
But the frustrating thing with somebody like Jackie Singh, and the reason why she gets away with like all the horrible crap that she does, like doxing people, accusing them of horrible crimes and stuff that they had nothing to do with, that, that poor guy in Europe that she – I think she's still trying to double down saying that he's somehow involved in shit. She's untouchable because she's broke, you know? In another video of mine, I opened up about the whole shit show when I was in high or when I was in college with the Women's Engineering Society, where I was effed with for like a year and a half, or it was about a year straight, by a college professor who did not like me because I was the treasurer of the Women's Engineering Society at my university. And she was sending all her little students and stuff to just do a harassment campaign that was out of this world crazy. Like really harassing the shit out of me. Now, I didn't sue her because I didn't have money. You know, I was a college student. I was living off the GI Bill. I was trying to get my engineering degree. The roles would be the, 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 the situation would be completely different nowadays. If somebody was doing this to me now with the amount of money that I make, with if, if the same thing was happening to me now, I would have sued the shit out of her. I would have sued the shit out of the school. But at the time, I couldn't do anything. Well, hey, Smith, you got a lot of money. Why don't you do that whenever Patrick, you know, calls you an unhinged, dangerous, mentally ill stalker? Well, I don't sue Pat because, one, he doesn't really have any money. And, two, it's not really actionable because nobody takes Pat seriously at this point except for weird, unhinged losers. It's kind of the same thing with Jackie where – she can get away with all this crazy shit, and she knows it. She absolutely knows it. She absolutely knows it. I mean, where, where are you going to win in a, in, a, in, a, in a civil case with Jackie? Her debt? <laughs> I just say this. That's, that's the unfortunate truth. But you could still call out her behavior as just horrible. It, it's really, really unbelievably horrible. What she does to completely innocent people and what Jim's doing, too. But at least Jim, you can make the argument, well, well Jim is a, a boozed out, wet brain moron who is actually facing civil lawsuits and he's losing civil lawsuits. I mean, it's amazing to me how he's managed to like lose that one case just because he never replied to it, which I firmly believe the reason he lost that lawsuit is that he's. He's so drunk all the time, he forgot to tell his lawyer about the fact he was getting sued by another guy. So his lawyer didn't know about it. But, yeah, it's kind of weird because, you know, I don't want to hate on people that are struggling with things. Like, I look at uh, that guy that uh, uh, Dan, nice podcast stupid, interviewed, had on there, Wayne Lamright. Lamprite. And I, I knew of La Wayne Lamprite well before Dan ever had him on. Now, I could be remembering this wrong. I believe the whole reason of Wayne Lamprey kind of just got found out on the Internet was he got kicked out of a grocery store for some reason, I think for like harassing a woman or something. I'm not exactly sure. And Wayne had a complete and utter public mental nervous breakdown. I don't think his life was ever the same after that. Um, I don't like Wayne's not exactly got a good relationship with his family. He's clearly not mentally altogether there. But I will say this. Wayne's perfectly harmless. He's a guy out in the desert living his life. He does a live stream every once in a while. He's got some off the wall ideas out there. I, I think some of them are pretty humorous. But he's harmless. He's not trying to hurt anybody. He's not trying to harm anybody. And this poor guy has been harassed. Uh, he's got he's had crazy people send swatters or, or have swatted him so many times to try to get him killed and shit. And Wayne is just this harmless, you know, eccentric guy out there in the desert. Just, you know, why mess with him? He's harmless. He's a, he comes off to me as like a pretty pretty all right guy. I don't agree with everything he freaking says, but that's, that's literally true for everybody. <laughs> I don't agree with most people, but, um, that poor guy has just been through hell 
way more than say Patrick has. And like unlike Patrick, Wayne doesn't go out of his way to try to harass people and antagonize people and, and do all that jazz. Like Wayne's just a weird old weird eccentric out in the desert. And he's been through hell. And I do not I will say this right now. Like I, I, I fully admit, I think Wayne is not altogether mentally well. Like he, he is surviving. He's living the best life he can on his own. And I'm not advocating at all that Wayne Lamprecht be put into like a mental hospital or anything like that. I don't believe for a second that that would make Wayne better. Um, I don't believe that just because somebody is eccentric or has a mental illness – that they should be, they should lose their civil rights and shit. I think a lot of people complain about the fact that we closed so many institutions under Reagan. I also think people don't remember how bad the institutions were back then. My old man ended up in one in Maryland. I think I honestly believe it was his way to get out of a a, a, a drug and assault charge on a police officer. My dad came back and he was not the same. Um, now I will say this before he went there, my father was not a good man. So but I'm not trying to make it sound like my dad had his shit together before he went into Shepherd Pratt, but there's a reason why so many of these institutions closed because what ended up happening is they were holding houses for people. And there was a tremendous amount of physical, mental, sexual abuse going on. They were doing all kinds of crazy shit. They used to hand out, um, what do they call them, uh, lobotomies, like they were going out of style, because that was supposed to be the thing that would fix everything. Like, oh, your wife's going through menopause? Let's shove this hook up her, fit, up her nose and rip out a portion of her brain under general anesthesia. I just, out of every weirdo that I follow, the one that I legitimately have the least... Or the the most, I should say, the the most dislike of has to be Jackie, because I think everything about her is a lie, or at the very least a gross misrepresentation. Um, I really don't quite get what her long term goal is, because I don't know how she converts her antics into making money or whatever. Um, I, I know she lost custody of her one kid, and I have to remind people how absurdly difficult that is to occur. In um, in anywhere, um, I have a coworker of mine. He went through hell. His uh, me and him were on an assignment, and he had to fly back on an emergency because basically he found out that his daughter, his three year old, was in um, foster care. Uh, somehow his wife got addicted to um, what do you call them diet pills. That in turn led to a methamphetamine addiction. And this all seemingly happened in the span of like, I'd say, eight months. And it was just devastating for him. Uh, he ended up having to quit working in the field completely because there was no way he was going to get any custody of his kids with the amount of travel that we do. And in the end, it's really screwed up because this woman has been in and out of jail I don't know how many flipping times. Yet, for some reason, she still has partial custody of the kid where like once a month she gets a week with the kid. There's already been a situation where like his, uh, his daughter's in therapy now over all this crazy shit. Um, where, because she got molested by like one of the druggies that were over at this woman's or at whatever crack house she's hanging out with, with her kid. And it's, it's, it's just, it's infuriating to me, not just as a dad, but as a human flippant being, that my coworker has been through all this hell. Um, and it's kind of how the legal system is set up when it comes to family law, where it so heavily favors the mother no matter what. And, and, and so this just, I'm, I'm getting completely off on a different top, topic. I have, it's crazy. I was actually, me and my wife were really, really close to both of these two. And when the whole divorce and everything came out, that woman, to this day, I think this woman tries to harass my wife on Facebook and stuff. 
it, it's just unreal. It's unreal. And that's one of the things that sucks about civil cases and so on. With a civil case, the person that's the mature one, the person that sees big picture, that's the one that goes through the most hell because the person that has nothing to lose, they can just make your life a living hell, say outrageous things, um, delay, 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 incur crazy court costs and stuff. And while the mature person has to just sit there and take it. So like very, 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 very negative experience here. And to me, this Jackie kind of reminds me of that where, you know, you get somebody that is clearly abusing the system because she knows at the end of the day, nobody is willing to waste the money necessary to sue her because you'll never get any money out of her. So she just can play around on the internet and just be miserable and try to ruin as many lives as she can. That's the thing that really bugs me about Jackie. She does the whole life ruination shit. She does. Pat tries to, but Pat is also really terrible at things. Like Pat's a guy that can't even get like a protective order against somebody because he's too stupid and lazy to follow through on anything. It, don't get me wrong. I don't like it that Pat does this kind of shit. I really, really, really don't. But at the same time, um, he's so ineffective at it that it doesn't really matter. Whereas, like, the shit that Jackie will do, <laughs> it is very actionable. It is absolutely 100% actionable, where she accuses completely innocent people, completely docks them and all, and she can get away with this just because she's broke. She knows it. I know it. We all know it. But she's still going to keep doing it. And it's, a, it's honestly kind of a terrifying thing for somebody that has things to lose. This is the entire reason why I am so proactive about my anonymity, why I try to. I, I intend, if you've noticed, the entire time that I've ever talked on this YouTube channel, I've been very, very careful to never say my rank. I'm pretty careful about when I was serving and so on. And there's things that I add in there that can go either way as to which branch I was in, what my job was, and so on. Similarly, when I say, well, I'm in Appalachia, that, that's literally like seven separate states that I could be in. I do this on purpose because there are people out there like Jackie. If Jackie figured out my identity, I do not – I don't doubt for a second she would try to ruin me financially, um, try to get me fired, try to like just ruin my relationship with my wife, all kinds of stuff. Why? Because I pointed out the fact that she lied about her military background. It's like, it's not my fault that she lied about this shit. But in her mind, she would absolutely do this. Because I, I think she's just, she's, I don't want to say that Jackie's mentally unwell, because I don't believe that. I, I think Jackie has it all there. Like, I think she has it all there more than Patrick. My theory with Patrick is something happened to him when he was like a kid. Where I, I firmly believe something happened to Patrick when he was like nine or ten years old that he has never opened up about or anything like that. Because to me, Patrick gets really, really emotional. He gets like the emotional intelligence of like a nine or 10 year old whenever he gets stressed out. He starts acting like a child, raging, stomping his feet, saying the same thing over and over and over again. It's like when my son is really, really frustrated. And I find that men and women that do this, it's typically due to trauma that occurred at around that age. And with like Jim Stewartson, I, I think what feeds Jim Stewartson's paranoia and shit is the guy is in a perpetual boozed up drug state where he doesn't know up from down. But with Jackie, I, I think this is way more cold and clinical. I do not want to make it sound like I think she's intelligent. I don't think Jackie's intelligent at all. I think she's a fucking moron. But I also don't think that there's some underlying medical issue or addiction or anything that feeds this. I think she is just a, an absolute asshole. I'm not even going to go so far as to say she's a narcissist or anything like that. I think she's just a, a terrible person. I think we try to medically diagnose people from far way too much in this country. But I digress. I'm done rambling. I got this off my chest. I hope you're all doing well. 
Um, take care of each other. Ciao.